So I am here today to do a graphic novel mixed review of four different graphic novels which I picked up recently from my library. I didn't know anything about any of them before I picked them up, which is why there's a variety of ratings in this one. Some are good, some are not so good. Just going to give you guys a little bit of an overview of the artwork and the ideas in each of them and tell you what I rated them. Just so you know, of course, each of these is a graphic novel and it's a mature graphic novel, which means that there will be scenes of blood, violence, possibly sex, that sort of thing when I show the book just so you know. So the first one I'm going to talk about is FBP which is volume one. This one is the Federal Bureau of Physics volume one and it's by Simon Oliver. This is a really interesting concept. It had the potential to be a very cool idea. I picked this up after flicking through it in the library and sort of seeing the vibrance of the artwork and thinking it was quite an interesting idea because it's basically set in this world where Science has gone mad, science has gone crazy, and all of the rules of science that humankind has defined over the many years, all the things we think we know about science and all the things that we have understood and developed and learned and really think we have a solid foundation, like all the laws of science, all of them start going crazy, all of them start breaking, things start happening that proves that science has gone berserk, and so a Bureau of Physics is made if you have some crazy wormhole open in your back garden, you need to ring them up. If time stops in your apartment, you need to ring them up. It's kind of like an alternative to the police and fire departments, that sort of thing. I love the idea. I thought the idea of this was very cool. I thought that it could have been done really, really well. However, I felt like the storyline itself was actually very boring. I didn't feel like the text was done very well. I didn't feel like the wording of it all made that much sense in places. There were some confused moments. Plus the artwork for me just didn't really do it. I thought it was going to because I saw these first few pages in the library and I was really enjoying them. And then I realised that it's actually quite different page to page. These first few pages I really enjoyed because they were very colourful and I really liked that. But then there were some dark pages later on that didn't feel like they fitted as well. And then the style changed later on into a completely different style. And it just didn't flow very well for me. It was very kind of blocky each sort of scene felt very blocky. Each of the different issues within this had different blocks within each issue, so it's not even like every issue is different. There were bits within different issues that changed and became odd and just I didn't like the direction of it. I actually got to the point where I was just really skim reading and just skimming over the artwork for the last few pages. I wasn't even paying that much attention because I just really wasn't into it. So let's say no more about that other than I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars and I wouldn't recommend. It was not a good read. I did not enjoy it. Good idea. Completely didn't work. Wasn't executed very well at all. The next one that I'm going to talk about is Sidekick Volume 1. This one is by Strasignski. I've no idea how you say that. This is a book that I was really not sure if I was going to like because it was a superhero book and I don't tend to read a lot of superhero stuff. It is by Image so I was wondering if maybe Image was going to do superheroes in a different way to like Marvel. Marvel obviously are very superhero focused and I've not read any Marvel comics but I was wondering how Image were going to do it. This one again was an interesting idea but the actual artwork didn't really draw me in and I didn't really feel for it. Basically what we have in this is we have a superhero called the Red Cowl and he is a big superhero who saves everyone from all sorts of things, you know, fairly stereotypical. And then we have his sidekick and his sidekick is called Flyboy and, and Flyboy works for the Red Cow. And then mysteriously one day the Red Cow is shot dead and he doesn't really know what to do with his life after he has lost his superhero that he is a sidekick for. Flyboy is basically abandoned, he doesn't know what to do with himself, he doesn't know who to be or where to go or what to do after it because he just had no alternative, that was the life that he thought he was going to live forever and so when he's just suddenly shot he doesn't really know what to do and it's kind of his story of like how he gets quite depressed and what he decides to do and how he tries to hunt down the murderer of the Red Cow and how he tries to become a superhero himself and all these sorts of things that he tries in order to get himself his own career and not just depend on the red cow. I like the idea, again, I thought it was an interesting idea and if it had been done really well I think it would have worked. The artwork is fairly stereotypical, it's quite, you know, plain, boring, comic-y style, which isn't really the style that I like. Um, I did like these pages, these sort of issue pages, I thought they were good, and I did like the way that they drew 
the female characters. I thought that that was a little bit more defined than the actual red cow himself. I liked the female characters and I liked the purple because purple's my favourite colour, but I don't think they were excellently drawn. I just think I like them personally. On the whole, this was an okay read. It was just that. It was okay, but it was nothing more. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't think it was enough to make me want to carry on with the series. So I gave this a two out of five stars. It was okay but it wasn't anything more than that and I wouldn't recommend it necessarily because I think there's a lot of other graphic novels out there that are a lot better. I didn't like the fight scenes in this, I felt like there were so many fight scenes that were unnecessary and they weren't developed well enough, they weren't drawn very well, they were very like pow pow and then it's over and it wasn't a drawn out fight at all, it didn't convince me at all that I was watching a fight or anything like that so yeah two out of five stars for that one unfortunately next i picked up 10 grand which is by the same guy who did the last one whose name i can't pronounce michael strasiegniski ben temple smith did the first four issues in this and then uh cp smith i think did the last two i liked ben temple smith's art style i didn't like cp smith's so that means that I did like the first four issues and I didn't like the last two. I really liked the artist who started it all off and I didn't like the ending because I'll show you guys like the initial pages and the initial four issues are um, this kind of watercolory, very silhouetted, scratchy type, dark, dingy feeling and I really enjoyed that because I thought that really fitted with the storyline which is quite dark and grim. Um, and then at the end, when we move into the other guy's artwork, this is the other guy's artwork, uh, or girl, I don't know if it's a female. <sighs> it's very like computer generated 3D, kind of abstract, not really my thing at all. I really don't like this art style, I thought it was just really crap and really boring and I didn't think it was even slightly emotional or I could connect with it at all. I did not like it, I did not like it at all even the kind of creepy scenes that are going on, like they just didn't interest me. So unfortunately this was not a case of the story being dislikable, it was just the artwork that put me off the end. The story is actually about a guy called Joe Fitzgerald and Joe Fitzgerald has this strange ability, power or deal with angels where he basically can come back to life every time he dies and every time he dies he gets to spend five minutes with his wife, who is dead, on the condition that he works for the angels and takes down people that they need him to take down and fights for them and does what they say. And I really like the idea, I really like the angels and demons concept of it all. We get to see the good guys and we get to see the bad guys and we get to see these other humans who are getting involved and mixed up in it all. I love the ethereal feeling of the first one's um, artworks, like there's some really wonderful pages. It is pretty violent, it is pretty graphic. And so I do love the scratchy style of the first artwork and I thought it was I thought it was going to be like a four or five star read. It wasn't because of the other artists. So I really liked the angel and demon religious side of things. I thought it was all done very well. I thought it was very captivating. The story itself was written very well. I liked that a lot and I didn't feel confused at any point. I felt like I was understanding it all. And it had some really original and very cool ideas. So I gave this a 3.5 because I couldn't quite give it a four because I just didn't like the second half of it really but I think it was a really good beginning and it had potential and if it had stayed with the same artist I probably would have given it a four stars so yeah if you like the second artist style you'll probably enjoy it but because I didn't I don't think I'm going to be continuing which is kind of sad but I enjoyed it whilst I read it so that's good um so that's that one and now on to the fourth and final this one is called Rocket Girl it is volume one and it's by Brandon Montclair and Amy Reader didn't really know what this was about but I think I'd seen it on someone else's channel I can't remember exactly who um but I've definitely seen it somewhere before and so I picked this one up but I didn't know what it was about other than a rocket girl presumably which is exactly what it is about it's about this young girl who's about 15 and she is called day young she basically lives in the year 2013 but her world has been completely messed up due to a machine that was built in 1986 and this machine was built before its time it was built and it allowed humans to go forward and backward in time and all these crazy things and learn all of this stuff that before they should have been able to learn it and develop all of these things before it should have been developed making her world go into chaos and craziness and basically she is in the 
uh, police force in her time period and so she is sent back to 1986 to go back and find this machine that has messed everything up and she's going back to try and destroy it before it was ever made and she knows that she's going to have to end up living there because she have she will have no way of getting back to them. This is Rocket Girl on the front cover. I liked the artwork a lot in this, I thought it was really cutesy and really fun and I enjoyed it. I loved the way that they drew this lady, the lady with pink hair. I thought she was great as a character and I think she was drawn really beautifully. I love the clean and clear style, the artwork and the colouring of this was fantastic. In this one I love the art more than I love the story. The story was alright, it was pretty decent, it was pretty fun, but it definitely wasn't as good as the artwork. The artwork was what kept me moving through it and really absorbing everything about it. And so yeah, I, I would say that this one is a fun read. It has some good elements to it. I did really love the artwork. I thought it was flipping fantastic to be honest. I, I really, really admired the artwork and the storyline had potential, it felt like it was going somewhere. I might continue on with this because I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars, I did really enjoy it and I think the story was good. I don't think it was as strong as the story in 10 grand even though I've given that a lesser rating because this one had better artwork by far and the story was solid throughout even though it wasn't amazing. So this one was a better combination than the 10 grand was, although otherwise I think they'd have been on par with each other. I definitely enjoyed it, I thought it was a good sort of sci-fi blend and I think it has the potential to go somewhere and be quite exciting so I might pick out the second one in this series if I do see it at the library or something then I'll probably pick it up. But that is all of them. If you guys are interested in reading any of the ones that I showed you please do let me know your thoughts about each of them down below and if you've read any of them then let me know your thoughts as well you've never heard of them I'd love to hear what you think having seen some of the artwork and hearing me talk about them. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all again very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the